Hey everybody, today we are in Revelation chapters 15 and 16. There is an ongoing thread through the book of Revelation, which we have been talking about these last few days, and that gets highlighted again here. In chapters 15 and 16, we see uh, this scene where, uh, in chapter 15, all these angels come and, uh, and people of God come and they begin worshiping God. And then in chapter 16, uh, we see uh, these bowls, part of uh, seven different bowls that are poured out and they, are, they symbolize God's wrath on the earth or wrath for you Aussie speakers. Now, the, the question is, what does this mean? Well, what's behind all of this? Well, if you notice in chapter 16, as you're reading through the bowls that get poured out and the, they're described as plagues, which should be a indicator in our brains of something elsewhere in scripture. This is what Revelation is really all about. Uh, it's a hyperlink text to other biblical uh, books and, and scenes. And so when we read Revelation 16 and we're, t and we're talking about these bowls that are poured out and these bowls represent plagues, it should be blink, a hyperlink in our brain to say, hmm, plagues, where have I heard about plagues before? This will take us all the way back to the book of Exodus where um, Moses goes before Pharaoh and he asks Pharaoh to let God's people go. Pharaoh refuses. And so God uh, allows these plagues to happen. And uh, the interesting thing about the plagues in Revelation 16 is that they're almost exactly the same as the plagues that we see in the book of Exodus. There's hail, there is uh, rivers, uh, water turning to blood. Um, there's all these, all these similar things that happen um, in Revelation 16 in the Exodus which should make us ask the question, well, what is the scene in Exodus all about? And it's about two things. It's about one, uh, freedom from oppression for God's people in, in slavery in Egypt. So God brings these plagues on because his desire is that his people are vindicated, let go, released from the evil that they find themselves in. Secondly, we are told that the plagues in Exodus are done to reveal God's glory and his power, particularly in Exodus. And here, uh, the plagues all sort of speak into the, the things that the Egyptians worshipped, the gods that they worshipped. So all of the plagues actually demonstrate that God is bigger and more powerful than these gods that the Egyptians believed in. And so all the things about, you know, frogs and locusts and all those things, those all um, were sort of ascribed to one of the Egyptian gods or goddesses. And so by doing this, God was demonstrating that, you know, those, things, those, those deities that you worship, well, they're nothing compared to me. I'm the one who's in control. And we're told that God does these things so that everybody will know. Everybody in the whole world who hears about this story will know that God is the real God and not these other false beings that are out there. So the, the, the plagues were all about God showing his power and his glory. So this brings us to Revelation 16. What are these plagues about? Well, God's people are in a similar situation, aren't they? They are under harsh um, oppression by the Roman government. They're being killed and martyred. So what is this scene playing out here? Well, just like in the Exodus in Egypt, um, the whole point is that one, this is a vindication of God's people, that God's desire is that uh, those who belong to him will, uh, will endure till the final day. They will be proven right. They'll be released, vindicated, um, taken away from the, the evil that is done to them in the world and rescued. And so God's plagues here indicate this is, this is what's happening to those who have oppressed God's people in the past. So be warned. Secondly, this is done like an exodus to reveal God's glory and power. 
to demonstrate that he is God, he is in control, he is the author of all of history. And so, if you haven't got, uh, if he hasn't got your attention yet, well, here is a really clear way to know that God is God and everything else is not. So, if you haven't paid attention, you better do so now. Now, this brings us back to chapter 15. Chapter 15 uh, is this scene where all these angels and um, all these people are, are glorifying God. And they say in verses 3 and 4, Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come before you. Your righteous acts have been revealed. And that little song that gets sung there, that's sort of um, the whole summary of what these two chapters are all about, about God getting the glory, about God being um, above all the other nations and all the other things that are out there, and that it's God who's bringing glory to his name by vindicating his people. So uh, when we read about these plagues, we're not just meant to say, well, God is just punishing people and God is out to get people because that's not just what's going on here, but that God vindicates his people and God wants to bring glory to himself and make it very clear to everybody that he is God. And therefore, this serves as a warning to those who are oppressing God's people or who have not glorified God, that God is giving them one last, uh, one last attempt to turn back before it's too late. So the challenge for us is uh, which side of history do we find ourselves on? Are we those who uh, endure oppression because we are being faithful as God's people? And if so, God is going to vindicate us on the last day. Oh, and secondly, do we know the glory and power of God that he is God and not everything else? Because if not, well, we might find out in a really terrible and shocking way that we were wrong. The things that we put our trust in were fake and false and hollow. So turn your attention to God before it's too late. That's it. We'll see you later. Bye.